All right, folks, what's going on? This is Romeo, a.k.a. Blackberry Jedi. B-B-R-Y-J-E-D-I is my custom Blackberry BBM pin. <clears throat> For those of you who want to add me, uh, today I am going to be talking about the key one. And basically how the key one has failed okay so let's talk a little bit about the key one it's a nice phone it's got a keyboard everybody's heard all the reviews nice soft back it's a decent camera it's mid-range processor i think it's like a, what a 625 or whatever it but I, I i will say that for it being a 625 <clears throat> it performs pretty well I'm I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I've had no real performance issues with this phone's uh, processor. All right, sorry, I had to pause the video because I forgot I wanted to compare the uh, phone to um, the other recent Black Boy. Blackberry Android phones that are there. So anyway, it's a decent phone. Charges really quick. Um, it's got like this boost mode when you plug in the charger. It asks if you just want a regular charger or charge it on boost mode. And I think when it's in boost mode, it somehow cuts back some of the processing uh, power of the phone. But you really don't even notice it if you're using the phone while in boost mode. Uh, you know, as you're doing it's everyday tasks. Um, it took me a while to get used to this phone uh, because my hands are pretty big and the phone kind of like got lost in between my thumbs when I would use it. My thumbs would kind of overlap as I'm using it. Like I'm used to something a little bit wider like, um, like this priv over here, you know? Um, See, the, the, the priv is a lot wider than this phone, you, as you can see. Okay, I'll bring it a little closer. Priv is a lot wider, and I know that you're kind of looking at the case. Let me take the case off real quick. Um, case makes it look wider than it actually is, but I'm trying to get this case off with a priv. Here we go. All right, sorry about that. So... You can tell the priv is quite a bit wider than the uh, key one. And comfort wise, you know, I like having a wider screen because um, my hands are big and my thumbs kind of get crossed over here. So I feel like I'm a little bit cramped when I'm typing. Um, I used to complain about the priv keyboard. Okay. I'll overlap the two keyboards and you can see if you can't that the keyboard on the priv is just a little bit wider uh not by much than the keyboard on the key one and i used to complain about this keyboard i was like oh that's so cramped but after using this and going back to this um it actually doesn't feel bad at all. Now I can really appreciate this keyboard more having used something a little bit more cramped. So anyway, let's talk about general usage of the key one. The key one, it's a lot more convenient. It's got the fingerprint sensor in the front. Boom, opens up really quickly. There have been a lot of times where um, I would, like the phone would be asleep and I'm trying to press or not press, I'm sorry, you don't have to press to keep the uh, the space bar that has the fingerprint sensor. You don't have to press it, you know, but I'm trying to get my fingerprint to register and it would not register. I'd have to wake up the phone some other way and either punch in my pin or, um, you know, after it's already awake, then it would sometimes register the fingerprint sensor. I've heard a lot of people say that they've never had a problem with their fingerprint sensor. I happen to have one. I don't know, maybe it was just a fluke, maybe my fingers are too dry, who knows, it could be a lot of different things, but in general, it's pretty quick, you see I just opened it really quick like that. Um, the phone, 
is a little bit slippery because it's so narrow and it's got these aluminum brushed edges. I think that's aluminum. And, you know, if, if you're holding it, it, it does, you know, it, 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 it's a weighty phone. It, it's not very light. It has some heft to it. So if you're not careful, it will slip through your fingers. If you're not holding it like this, if you happen to be somehow gripping it some other way, the weight of the phone will pull it from your fingers. Um, I do have a case for it. This is the case that I chose. Um, this is a, I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if I can get this in focus here. It says cover on. I guess that's the brand. There you go. Don't buy this case. This pay, the, 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 this case is horrible. Um, as far as the functionality of the phone, it interferes because the buttons are so hard when you're trying to, let's say, take a screenshot. <clears throat> Excuse me, take a screenshot. You need to press the power button and I think one of the volume buttons or something like that. And trying to get that done, you know, it was really hard. This has a shortcut that you can uh, double press the power button to get the camera. It's really hard to do with this case on. And, you know, when I bought the case on Amazon, a lot of people uh, writing reviews did say that, but I kind of didn't believe them. I said, I want to try it out for myself. I like the way it protects the phone. So in that case, it does its job because uh, this is really thick, hard. Uh, rubber but it does interfere with how you use the buttons on the phone um, I could never get the double click fast enough with this hard rubber to uh, get the phone to react to turn the camera on so some of the things that um, I like about this is that you can use everybody talks about the shortcuts on uh, from the home screen you know if i want to send a text i press t if i want to do a bbm i press b and all these you know shortcuts you can assign to the phone what i don't like is that if i'm in an application let's just say i'm in twitter and i gotta go to the home screen and then press the shortcut which is kind of redundant because if I'm going to go to the whole screen, I can also just press the icon I want. If it's in a folder, then yeah, that's one more step. But, you know, I, I wish there were a way to um, call up the shortcut from another place other than the home screen because it's a little cumbersome. Um, one thing I like about, let's say, the priv here is one of my shortcuts is that that I use a lot is I swipe up and I can go to you know Google search text or BBM I don't know if you can see it because the screen is so bright um, so you know if I want to do a text message I go here I do Google search I go there BBM I go there and I use those things constantly um, and here, you know, I, there, there's no shortcut for that here on the home screen. It doesn't really do anything. Um, you know, I can pull out this for certain things that are here. Um, I can use the hub, which the hub on the hub on Android is freaking horrible. I'm sorry, I don't agree with anybody that says the hub is a good is a good implementation on android I, I i don't agree it's it's another app that you have to reload all of your accounts into that app so if you don't turn off the notification notifications for the hub or your gmail let's just say you're going to get double notifications it's just annoying and it's cumbersome you know i have to flip this way to get into my hub and then let's say if i'm going to do something i would you know click on it and then it's going to open up the app anyway for that i might as well just go here and just do the app shortcut, you know, or, you know, if you have a drop down notification, you have all of your stuff from your drop down notifications. The hub is just redundant. I normally don't use it. I just set it up here to see if I can maybe convince myself to like it. It's not working. I, I don't use the hub. I'm going to end up taking it off anyway. So I do like um, those shortcuts from the home button on the Priv and the DTEC 60. Now you see I have two, two DTEC 60 here and I'm going to talk about build quality of the recent BlackBerry offerings, okay? So basically my issue is 
that the build quality of BlackBerry's recent phones is horrendous. I'm sorry. I love BlackBerry and I'm a BlackBerry fan. I will always buy their products. I have numerous, numerous, numerous BlackBerry 10 phones and, um, you know, everything from their BlackBerry 10 offerings up until their Android offerings. I, I always buy them. I'm a fan. I will always buy them, but I'm not happy and I'll explain why. Okay. So starting with this, a lot of people complained that they had, um, like the, like the screen was very flexible here. Like if you twisted it here and whenever they would press on the screen, it would tap because of the spacing in between. I did not have that, that problem with any of my privs that I've had. The priv problems that I did have was one that I got, um, the speaker was very low, so I had to exchange it. And, um, at one time I had the AT&T version and I had an unlocked version. And I have a video of that. If you look on my prior videos of when I when the Priv first came out, the AT&T version was very, very buggy. Um, the unlocked version ran a lot better. And somebody else also noted that in their review as well. Um, so, so far, hardware-wise, I have not had to have any real problems with my current Priv. Um, and I wish that the rest of the BlackBerry Android offerings would have followed suit. So after this, I got my first uh, DTEK 60. And I don't know if you can tell, but my screen is cracked. Okay. So this phone is very thin. It's very frail. I always had a case on it. Um, but for some, and, and I don't have this in my back pocket. All my jeans are pretty loose fit on me. And the screen cracked. I don't know. It could have been that maybe that winter was very cold. And I went outside from a warm apartment to the cold. And maybe it cracked. I don't know. Um, so that happened. So I went on, I forget which website it is that they sell used phones. And I bought another Priv for less than it was to buy this new digitizer for the old Priv. I was looking just to try to replace the screen. And they wanted 350 something dollars for the digitizer with shipping. That would have cost me almost 400 bucks. I got this for one for a little over or maybe a little less than $300. And uh, the phone worked okay. But as you can see, I am missing. I don't know if, if you can see any detail here. Um, there's no glass here because the glass cracked. Okay. Um, I was not very happy with that happening. Um, so it was all cracked. The picture started to come out blurry and grainy. So I just finished cracking it and pulled all the glass out. And now the pictures are not the same. I don't know if this glass helps the camera to remain sharp and focused. It seems like it does. You know, maybe somebody will tell me that that glass has nothing to do with it. Maybe the glass is only for protection. But nevertheless, it cracked. I know a few other people that has happened to. Um, so I stopped using the phone because I didn't want anything else to break. Um, I am, I was not happy with the performance of the, uh, D tech 60. This thing is a lag monster. I mean, people complain about, um, and you know, uh, uh, Samsung's and LG's lagging and all other Android phones lagging. This thing would literally freeze up to the point where I couldn't use it anymore. It literally, like I would, turn, I would try to turn on the camera. I would try to get a picture to show up from Google Photos and it was lag, lag, lag. Now, it could have been that, you know, maybe my first one was like that. I was like, oh, maybe it was a glitch with this phone. But no, this one was like that too. They're both lag monsters. I don't really like to use DTEK 60. You know, I use it every once in a while, basically just to remind myself why I don't use it anymore. So, having gotten that out of the way, these are my two, these are my other Android BlackBerry experiences. Um, the Priv I went back to today from using the Key One because I'm about to show you what happened to my Key One. Um, the Priv, the battery that just doesn't last anymore. It used to have a really good battery. I don't know what's going on with the phone. The battery was draining fast. It got hot a few times and it doesn't have like a quick charge option. 
So like I came home like maybe two or three hours ago, maybe two hours ago I got home and I plugged it in and it's only like at maybe 20 something percent and it's annoying to wait for it that long, like to charge. It, it just really is. So the key one addresses a lot of the other issues that these other phones have. It has a quick charger option. Uh, the camera is really sharp. The screen is sharp for what it is. I think it's, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's a 1080p screen or something around there. The screen is really sharp for what it is. Um, camera pretty much has no lag. And I was, one of my concerns was that when the phone came out, it had a 600 series process. I'm like, oh my God, this thing's going to lag. These things lag with 800 series processors. I can only imagine. But however it is that they optimized this uh, phone's software, it works very well with it. It doesn't really heat up a lot. Um, the camera's uh, the quickest out of any of the Android uh, BlackBerry phones. I was very, very happy with it. Um, there was something else I wanted to mention about its performance, but I forgot. It'll probably come back to me later. So, why am I unhappy with the key one? I'll show you why I'm unhappy with the key one. I'll turn the screen on. Okay, everybody sees the screen. And everybody sees the screen now in my hand. So, at first, this started to just show up as a little screen peak. Like, this was held down. And I was like, oh, okay, I got a little um, screen left. No problem. I kept using it for a few days. Um, then today as I'm laying, you know, I'm laying down, I'm using the phone, you know, kind of like upright like this and boom, the whole screen just flops open. Now, as you can see, or maybe you can't see, um, there's nothing really holding the screen to the base of the phone. That's ridiculous. What the hell? I mean, no glue. There's, there seems to be like, and you can't, you can't really see it on my phone. I'm recording this with my LG V20, so it's a little grainy, um, to say the least. Let me see if I turn the flash on for a second. Okay, that just made it worse. Um, but there's there's these little tabs like here. There's like one here. I can feel them with my finger. There's one here. Oops. Stand. There's one here. There's one there. There's one there. I can feel them with my finger. And I would imagine that those little tabs are supposed to somehow hook under this screen. I know I'm not doing any favors by with that flash. I'll turn it off. Where is it? Okay. Um, I, I and I, I I'm I'm assuming that those little tabs are supposed to um, maybe hook around this edge of the screen in here to keep it in place. But I don't see that happening at all. I tried to snap it into play. Somebody said, oh, why don't you... Okay, so... My camera just cut, shut off on me. This is part two of my issue with the Key One. Because um, I'm, I'm recording this with my LG V20. And WhatsApp decided to send me a notification saying that the phone couldn't be verified. And it stopped, it stopped the phone from recording. That's one of the things I hate about WhatsApp. It's so intrusive when you don't sign in and you have the app on your phone. It just keeps showing this stupid thing. And I'm going to try to get through this video now and somehow piece the two pieces together. Anyway. Yeah. So, you know, this isn't working. This is freaking unacceptable. I don't know how they expected this screen to hold into place. There's no adhesive. There's no glue. There's no double-ended tape. N nothing. I, I, I don't understand how they thought this was not going to happen. I, I, I really don't get it. So, you know, I, I, I hit up, I, I got this phone June 2nd. I ordered it like on May 30th and Amazon accidentally put out a link to order the phone and didn't realize they did it. Somebody gave me the link just showing me that the phone was on the website and I saw the buy it now button, so I bought it really quick. And I ended up getting my phone on June 2nd on my lunch break. I came home, the box was sitting there. I did a quick unboxing. Um, there should be a link in you know, um, my list of videos. Um, so anyway, I, I, I went back to Amazon and I filled out the return uh, 
item form. I told them what was wrong with it. They sent me a, a unit right away. So I have one sitting in a box. Let me get these off the table. I have one sitting in a box here. It's been sitting here for about a week or so. So I figured I'd do this unboxing really quick. So again, bada bing, bada boom. This is garbage. Really pissed off. I'm really not happy with this quality of the phone again. So it's my Amazon box. Let's try to do a little quick unboxing. I want to see if they sent me a like a refurbished unit or if they sent me a brand new inbox unit. Now, of course, I, I have a few days to return. This is not working out very well. I'm trying to be careful not to shake the table. Um, I have to, you know, back up my phone and set up another phone. And I, I hate doing that. I, I really despise setting up new Android phones. They're so annoying to set up again. Downloading all your apps takes a few hours and blah, blah, blah. Resetting up the phone the way you want it. Entering all your accounts again. Yada, yada. So... They sent me another one. Okay, so we're boxing all over again. We'll see if this one has the same issue as the other one, if we can notice it right away or not. All right, slice open that. Slice open the tape like they don't want me to open this. Okay, so here's my brand new key one. See if there's any. See now, my, my my main concern is that this phone may be of the same batch of phones as the new ones. Like I don't know if when they started to report the screen lifts, if they automatically were able to fix this with a new build and then start sending those out. I don't know. This may be of that same batch and I may have that issue again. If that is the case, I will be contacting BlackBerry because I was within two days of being able to not get a replacement from Amazon. This replacement came from Amazon. Had I waited another three days, I would have had to contact BlackBerry and BlackBerry would have had to send me um, you know, a replacement from their stock. Okay, so let me just go through this real quick. Yada, yada. All right, same thing here. And of course, when I send this back, uh, Amazon is not getting all of their accessories back. They're getting the back a box and a phone. All the other stuff I'm keeping, if they got an issue with it, then they should have sent me a good phone. I don't care. So um, I've never sent back accessories when I send back the phone anyway but okay so here's my welcome screen I've got 50% battery left on this so I, I'm gonna start setting up this phone um, I hope like I said like I don't have the same issues with the screen I hope that they were able to fix it right away after they realized the first batches were bad we'll see okay so that's about it for now um guys hit me up in the comments let me know if you guys have any questions and i'll do another review to let you know how this phone is getting along or coming along or if i've run into any glitches so far okay this is romeo aka blackberry jedi i'll talk to you soon